All right, find the book of James, if you would. We're going to be in James chapter 1. A few weeks ago, I uh, preached from the, had the opportunity to preach, and we looked at uh, uh, just that first section in the book of James, which is on um, uh, enduring temptations, very practical. James was a pastor of a, the church there at Jerusalem, and, and uh, the book of James is a very practical uh, book. And so, in uh, verse number, uh, uh, verse number uh, 18, uh, James says, uh, Here of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. And uh, so, that, that image there, that uh, metaphor, the symbolism of the first fruits of his creatures, uh, means that we are to live a godly, consecrated, separated, dedicated life to God. And uh, so we are set apart. And so really what we're talking about here, set apart from God, uh, we're talking about sanctification. So in uh, this next section, uh, James is dealing with things that have to do with uh, sanctification. And of course, sanctification means that we are growing and progressing and developing in our spiritual life so that we become more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Word of God has a tremendous um, impact on this uh, uh, work of sanctification that God does in our life. And uh, uh, so it's so important the Word of God is to uh, the sanctification, the growing, the spiritual development. So we're going to read tonight. Uh, if you'd uh, like to stand for the reading of the Word of God tonight, we're going to uh, look tonight at uh, verses 21 through 25. So the Bible says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Look at this now. This man shall be blessed in his deed. And uh, so we want to be... Uh, not hearers only, but we want to be hearers and doers. All right, appreciate you standing in honor of the Word of God. You can go ahead and be seated. So, um, D.L. Moody said the Bible was not given to increase our knowledge, uh, but to change our lives. And so, the Bible has a really a central role in the work of sanctification, changing our lives, making us more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me illustrate a, a, um, the kind of the truth that I want to get across tonight, or to, at least to set the table. You know, one of the milestones in the life of a child is when they take their first step. That's always exciting. But before they can take that first step, they have to grow and they have to develop physically to the place uh, that their legs are able to um, their legs are able to support the weight of their body. And then also they have to uh, develop their balance before they can begin to take those first steps. And uh, we make a big deal out of it when a child takes their first steps. It's always an exciting thing because it means they're growing. They are making progress in their human development. It means they're headed towards adulthood when they take those first steps. Now listen, if a child is not able to uh, um, able to walk, then uh, that child is going to be impaired physically the rest of their life. And so, you know, taking those first steps are important. If, there, if a child's not able to walk, he'll be physically impaired the rest of his life, his or her life. And so, um, if a child of God uh, does not learn to hear and to do the Word, then he's going to be spiritually impaired the rest of his spiritual life, okay? So in the same way that if a child can't walk, he's physically impaired, a Christian, a child of God, if, not, if the child of God does not develop uh, the ability to hear and to do the Word of God, then we're going to be spiritually impaired. 
And so, um, and so uh, that's why this uh, idea of hearing and doing, that's why it is so foundational to our spiritual development. And so what I want to do tonight, I just want to kind of summarize the passage and then uh, give you an idea of what uh, James is getting across here. And then we're going to look a little bit at, uh, at the hearing and the doing. So the first thing James says in uh, verse, number, um, uh, verse number 21, and this is, you know, again, that poetic uh, nature of the King James. Uh, he says, uh, we don't talk this way today. He says, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. So he says, lay apart. And uh, so what, that word lay apart, it means to lay down. It kind of reminds me when the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus and the church at Colossians and the church at uh, uh, Philippi, all of those churches, he said that we are to put off the old man and to put on the new man. Put off the old, we are to lay down the old man and to put on the new man, which is Christ. And James is basically saying the same thing. He says we need to lay down all filthiness and all superfluity of naughtiness. And so the filthiness there is just the things that defile us as a Christian. The superfluity of naughtiness would just mean all excess, um, the, word, uh, na uh, the word naughtiness, it really, it's a word that translated, it means wickedness or evil. We don't use that word very much. We would use the word wrongdoing. And so what he's saying is we need to lay down and, and to turn away and abandon the, the things that are defiling us and uh, the things, all excess wrongdoing, and then we need to receive with meekness the engrafted word. And so now the engrafted word there, uh, what that means is that the word of God has to get assimilated into our life. And the, the idea of the engrafting means that, uh, uh, that the word of God is foreign to our Adamic nature, our old fallen nature. So, you know, like if you're uh, grafting um, branches into a tree, uh, those aren't branches that came out of the tree. They came out of another tree and you're putting them into the tree. And so the Word of God, it's foreign to our Adamic nature, but we need to get the Word of God assimilated into our life. And so there's a couple of things here um, that will make the Word of God unproductive in our life. And the first one is sin. He said, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Listen, we've got to deal with sin in our life. Sin has to be confronted and it has to be confessed and it has to be forsaken. Sin, listen now, sin will keep the Word of God from becoming productive in our life. And the other thing is our nature. Now you remember when Jesus taught the parables, he said there's four kinds of soils and you know that are going to affect how the Word of God is received. And the, the soils represent the heart. And so uh, what that means is that that um, that that the condition of our heart that too can make the word of God unproductive. So in those four kinds of soils, uh, you know, there's the the uh, hard heart. Listen, when we are hard hearted, the word of God is not going to penetrate our heart. And then he talks about the 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 uh, seed that is sown on the stony soil, and uh, so that's where tribulation springs up. And and uh, so sometimes uh, we have a heavy heart because of tribulations and difficulties and trials. And uh, because of the trouble that we're going through, that can make the, the Word of God unproductive in our life. And then he talks about the seed that is sown among the thorns. And he says that, you know, the riches and the cares of this life and riches and pleasures, those kinds of things can choke out the Word of God and make the Word of God unproductive. But thank God, sometimes the seed lands in good soil and it brings forth some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. And so you have these two things that can affect 
how productive the Word of God is in our heart, and that is sin. We have to deal with sin. We can't allow sin to have free course in our life and expect the Word of God. I remember in my dad's Bible, it was that statement. Maybe you've seen it. Either sin will keep you from this book, or this book will keep you from sin. And so sin can affect how the Word of God is, how, uh, how productive it is in our life, how effective the Word of God is, how much we are changed by the Word of God. And again, the other thing would be the condition of the heart. And so then, uh, James, look at um, in uh, verse number 22, he says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. And so he's given an illustration of the person who is a hearer of the word, and not a doer. So this is the illustration that he gives. So it's like the guy that gets up in the morning, throws his clothes on, he's got to go to work, and he glances in the mirror, and he sees that uh, he needs to comb his hair, and he needs to shave, but he's got a few other things that he does, so he puts his shoes on, goes down, makes his coffee, fixes his lunch, and then he forgets that he didn't shave, and he forgets that he didn't comb his hair, and so he goes out, and, but the point is that he's not changed. Because he just kind of glanced in the mirror and uh, went on and forgot about those things. His life is not changed. And so, listen, that's, what he's, that's the main point that he's making here is somebody that is, uh, only hears the Word of God but doesn't apply and obey the Word of God, their life is not changed. And that's, uh, again, what D.L. Moody said. The Bible wasn't given to give us information. It's given to change our life. And so we cannot just be a hearer if we are just a hearer, then the Word of God is not going to change our life. Now he contrasts that with the doer. Look in uh, verse number 25. And he says, But whoso, now this is the doer of the Word, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And so now he's He's um, describing. Um, he's describing the person that spends enough time in the Word of God, paying attention, and um, uh, paying attention to the Word of God, meditating upon the Word of God, that it begins to change his life. And so the idea is that when somebody spends time in the Word of God, they continue in the Word of God, they begin to see areas of their life, flaws, and areas where we do not, uh, where we are not Christ-like, wrong attitudes, uh, wrong spirit, the wrong uh, actions, wrong conduct. As we are looking in the Word of God, then uh, we see those in our life and we begin to make changes. Now let me, uh, let me uh, uh, point out something here. He refers to the Word of God. He says, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. He calls the Word of God the perfect law of liberty. Now that's a paradox. That's a, man doesn't normally think this way that, you know, we would think the law is something that confines and something that restricts something that places limitations, like a speed limit. All right, be honest. How many of you don't pay any attention to the speed limit? See, well, that's what a, <laughs> that's what a law does. It restricts. It put, places limitations. Usually we don't think of a law as being something that, that liberates us or provides liberty for us. And yet James says that, that the law, it's the law of liberty. Well, what does he mean there? Well, you remember Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse number 31, he said, if ye, uh, uh, he said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. So if we continue in the Word, the Word of God will liberate us. Now the reason that the Word of God liberates that's a paradox. The law of God, the Word of God, the reason it liberates us is because it exposes our sin and then it creates within us a desire 
to break the power that sin has over us. And so as we spend time in the Word of God and, the, and we see areas of our life that need to be changed and um, the Word of God is a, it's a, it's a channel of grace, it's a means of grace in our life and uh, so it creates the desire. But then also through the Holy Spirit working with the Word of God, it, it breaks the power that sin has over us. And so that's why James refers to the Word of God as the perfect law of liberty because it, when it has the proper sanctifying effect in our life, it breaks the power of sin over us. It gives us a desire to break with sin and then the power to break sin's uh, stranglehold or break sin's chains in our life. Okay, so um, here's really, I think, um, what, uh, what we can understand from what James is saying when he's talking about look, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. This is what happens. When we spend time in the Word of God, the Word of God uh, reflects two images. Who do we see in the Word of God? Well, we see Christ in the Word of God. We see the glory of God. We see the glory of Christ, the nature and the being of Christ. But also in the Word of God, we see our own selves, don't we? Like when Jesus teaches that uh, we are to forgive um, others as Christ has forgiven us. And, uh, you know, somebody at work has just taken advantage of us and, and maybe uh, took credit for something that we did and we're agitated and we're, you know, we're irked at that person. And uh, then we go out on our lunch hour and we read, we're reading in the Sermon on the Mount where he tells us that we're to forgive those who have sinned against us or in Ephesians chapter 5 that we're to be tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven us. And we realize, hey, I'm not doing right here. I need to forgive this person for what they did. And so, so the idea here is that in, when we are in the Word of God, we see the glory of God. We see the glory of Jesus Christ. But we also see areas where we come short. And so uh, Christ is reflected. We are reflected. And so when uh, that will reveal to us our need of salvation, but then also our need of sanctification. And so through the Word of God, God uses His Word to convict us of our sin, to break sin's power, to show us how we, uh, where areas where we are not like Jesus Christ, things that we need to do to be more like Christ, things that we need to not do that was not a part of Christ's life. And so it's through that time that we spend in the Word of God. Guess what it does? It sanctifies our life and it changes us because we see Christ and we see ourselves in the Word of God. And so that's what James is saying here, that it's the Word of God that changes us. Now let's narrow in and let's talk about hearing and doing. So when he says in, um, in verse 22, he says, uh, But be ye doers of the Word and not hearers only. And so we don't want to make the stake, mistake here that hearing is not important. We're to be hearers and doers. Both of those are required if the Bible is going to change our lives. So hearing involves two things uh, that I'll pull out of the text. One, paying attention. Uh, you know, when you were a kid and mama gave you something to do and she said, Johnny, I want you to take out the trash and you don't take out the trash, what does she say? Johnny, did you hear me? Did you hear what I said? And uh, so uh, hearing involves paying attention, uh, but it also involves meditation. So, and the reason uh, that I say it involves paying attention, if you'll look in verse number uh, 24, and he's talking about the hearer in verse number 24, he says, for he beholdeth himself. And then in verse number 25, he talks about the doer, and he says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. And so the hearer beholds, the doer looks. It's two different words. And so the word that's translated look, it, it's a word that actually means to uh, bend down and look into something. 
And so it, uh, it's a, it's, it means more than just a casual or passing attention. It means giving close and careful attention. It's more than a casual and passing attention, but it means giving close and careful attention. Example of that from the Bible, uh, both Mary and John on, the, on Resurrection Sunday, they went to the tomb, not at the same time, but the gospel writers use this word when they say both John and Mary looked into the tomb. And so both of them, they bent down and carefully looked in to see all that uh, had happened in there. And so the idea is they're absorbing. They're paying careful attention. They're observing what is inside of the tomb. And so that's, the, uh, that's where we're getting this idea. Uh, the, listen, the, the hearer beholds. He glances. But the doer, he pays close attention. He absorbs the truth. He's absorbing it. Okay, so... Uh, an illustration of that. Listen, if uh, uh, Sherry wears contacts, uh, used to wear contacts, and she also has, you know, not expensive jewelry, but uh, she has earrings. And so there have been times that she has lost a contact lens or lost an earring, you know, on the carpet. And so when we're looking for that, do we just take a casual glance? No, that's not how you look. When you're looking for something, you're down on hands and knees and you're scouring every... Listen, that's the difference between just kind of giving a glance and, and, and looking into the Word of God, carefully paying attention to what you hear. Okay, let's be honest. How often is it when you're listening to preaching or you're reading your Bible in your morning that your mind just begins to wander? Does that ever happen to you? It happens to me. It happens to all of us, doesn't it? I think there's a spiritual battle there. How is it that we can watch a ball game and be glued to the TV and, I mean, and not get distracted for three hours, you know, or watch a movie or something like that? And, man, we are all in, but when it comes to the preaching or the Word of God, we have sometimes it's easy to get distracted. And so, listen, that's a spiritual battle. And so the idea of hearing, if we're going to hear doing begins with hearing. We need to pay close attention and not get distracted. Listen, this is, this is how important it is. So Adam was not created autonomous. What I mean that by that is he was created dependent upon God's leading and guiding. God didn't just say, okay, Adam, I created you. Now go and do whatever you want, did he? God guided and led and gave instructions and commandments to Adam. So God did not create us autonomous. We need His leading and we need His guidance and His direction in our life. So what happened to Adam when he didn't listen to God? Well, he brought trouble upon himself and it was disastrous for everyone that came after him. Listen, I, I, I just want us to understand paying attention is important. God, God made us to hear and to put into practice his teaching. He's, he, he guides us and directs us and we need that. Now the second thing that affects how well we hear is meditating. And so look at a verse number 25. He says, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. And what's that next word? continueth therein. The E-T-H on the end, it's a present tense. It's an ongoing action. And so it's not just a glance here, but the continuing, really there's two, two ideas that are involved. And, uh, uh, and that means to uh, continue, uh, look or to persevere in the Word, okay? And so we don't just give it a casual reading, but continuing or persevering would mean that we do some meditation upon what we've read. We stop and think about it. We, we you know, like the, like the cow chewing on the cud, turn it over in our mind. We might run some cross-references, might look up some definitions. We do a little bit of, a little bit of study on it. We spend some time thinking about what God is saying in the passage. And so it's not just paying attention, but it's meditating on the Word of God.
And uh, so um, uh, think of it this way. <clears throat> uh, the Word of God reveals to us the uh, nature and the being of God. And so when we are meditating upon the Word of God, we're discovering the nature and the being of God. That's what changes us. Again, we see God, we see ourselves, and we see the vast difference between, and, and we desire to be like Him. So as we are meditating upon the Word of God, paying close attention, continuing in it, not just a casual reading, but studying, memorizing, chewing it, uh, uh, chewing it, uh, chewing it over, that's not right, thinking it over, you know, chewing on it, that's it. As we're doing all of those things, then we are focused on the nature and being of God and we're discovering that. So let me just to give, illustrate what, I, what, what, I'm, what I'm talking about here and how that changes us. So um, Sherry and I have been married for, is it 46 years, 43 years? What is it? Yep, 43 years. And so we started dating three years before we got married, two years before we got married. So I remember the first time I bought her jewelry, I, I bought her gold jewelry, and she appreciated it, but she said, I'm allergic to gold jewelry. I can't wear it. And so guess what? Because I have strong affections for her, because I wanted to please her, Still have strong affection, still want to please her, and all the time. So that's been uh, so that's been uh, forty five years ago. Sherry, have I ever bought you another piece of gold jewelry? Never have. I've never forgotten that. And why is that? Because I want to please her. I have strong affections for her. And so, listen, when when we love the Lord, when we have strong affections for Him, what we see about Him in His Word will change our life. It will change how we order our life. So that's hearing. The two primary things about hearing are paying attention and then meditating on the Word of God. So just a couple of things. We're almost done here. A couple of things about doing the Word of God. Uh, it would be obeying and applying. So hearing involves paying close attention and then meditating on the Word of God. Doing involves obeying and and applying the Word of God. And so the, the word that's translated doer, it means it refers to someone that observes or carries out what he hears. He observes or carries it out. There's an intent to put into practice uh, what he uh, hears in the Word of God. So um, just a quick illustration of that. Okay, my favorite place to eat is Texas Roadhouse. Amen. And uh, so can I tell you something? When I go to Texas Roadhouse, I don't go there to read the menu. I, I plan on applying the menu. Amen. Amen. When I get, I'm not going to just read the menu. I'm going to go and I'm going to apply what's there. I'm going to order what looks good and then I'm going to eat the meal and I'm going to enjoy the blessing. Amen. And that's the way it is with the Word of God. We're not supposed to just read it. We're supposed to put it into practice. And we're supposed to apply and obey the Word of God. And that way we can enjoy the blessing of it. And so that's the idea there. You know, if you want to, you want to look at it this way, we say that the Bible is like God's owner's manual for our life. And, uh, you know, um, most of the cars that I've owned came with an owner's manual. And you know what every one of them said? Every one of them said put oil in the crankcase and put antifreeze in the radiator. I haven't had a single car that I have gone against what the owner's manual says. I've never put uh, oil in the crankcase and I've never put, yeah, no, wait a minute. I've never put antifreeze in the crankcase and I've never put oil in the radiator. I had a guy tell me one time that he actually did that, that he got the wrong, he, he got the, he was putting, uh, he was wanting to put uh, oil in his, uh, I don't remember what he said. I think he said he put antifreeze in the crankcase. And uh, what happens if you do that? Well, you have all kinds of trouble. And so listen, God made us. He created us. Just like General Motors created the 97 GMC pickup that I have. And uh, I've always put, antifreeze 
in the radiator and I put, always put oil in the crankcase. And uh, so, listen, God made me, and here's the owner's manual right here. Okay? Somebody says Bible means basic instructions before leaving earth. And so this is God's instruction book. And uh, so, listen, uh, we are to obey the Word of God and apply, apply the Word of God, and that way we can enjoy the blessings. Now, um, so, so I would uh, use the word apply in a long-term sense. You know, obey would be maybe the short term, the commands of God, but applying the Word of God in a long-term sense. And so it's putting into regular practice the truths that we learn by paying attention and meditating on the Word of God. It's putting into long-term practice. Now, uh, many have, uh, I've often heard the recommendation of pastors that when you, every time you hear preaching, you ought to listen for one truth that you can, uh, one thing that you can apply in your life. That's pretty ambitious, I think, to, you know, me, I have to make a list, put it in my wallet, and work on them one at a time, you know. I'm still working on the list that I made 15 years ago. Just kidding. But I did, you know, I, I, one pastor said that that's what we ought to do with the Word of God. We ought to find one thing in each message that we can apply in our life. And I think that's ambitious. But I like what Kent Hughes says, and we're winding down here. And he said verse 25 is the apex of James. Looking and doing, looking and doing. All of these verbs are in a continual sense. So it doesn't matter if we've just been saved three months or if we've been saved three decades. We still need to be in practice of paying attention and meditating upon the Word of God so that we can then obey and apply the Word of God and that needs to be an ongoing thing all of our days. Let me ask you a question tonight as we wind down. Uh, anybody here uh, has achieved the measure of Christ-likeness, perfect Christ-likeness? No, we haven't. And uh, the Word of God, listen, the Word of God is one of the primary means that God uses to sanctify our life. And that just means that we grow and we become more and more like Lord Jesus Christ. And so if the Word of God is going to have that sanctifying influence, if the Word of God is going to enable us to grow and develop, then we have to be hearers and doers. So I love this. Uh, so stop and think about this. Uh, Bishop Aylmeyer would often preach to his congregation, and they had the same problem we did. Sometimes, you know, the blank face would come up. And so he said, whenever, uh, whenever the people in the congregation, uh, uh, whenever they were inattentive, not paying attention, then he would start reciting some verses from the Hebrew Bible. And when he started speaking to them from the Hebrew Bible, they'd all look up and stare at him in astonishment. And then he would uh, tell them, you know, it's foolish to listen to words that you don't understand but then neglect words that are so easy to understand. It is wise for us to pay attention and meditate and then obey and apply the Word of God. You, you remember in the uh, Jesus end of the Sermon on the Mount with the two builders, the wise man and the foolish man. And he said, the wise man builds his house on the rock, the storms come, and the house withstands the storm. He's a wise man because he hears and then he does the instructions of Jesus Christ. The foolish man, he builds on the sand. The storm comes. His house falls because he hears the word, but he doesn't do the word. And so there you have that same idea of spiritual growth, spiritual development, the sanctification. The word of God is such an important part of that. We want to be hearers and doers of the Word so, so God can form us and mold us and shape us into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Father, thank you for the very practical instruction from the book of James. And, and he was a pastor and he had a pastor's heart and he wanted to see God's people grow. 
And Lord, there have been times in my life when I've uh, grown rapidly, had growth spurts, just like a little child. And, and when they have those growth spurts and, and the pair of jeans that they wore two months ago are above the ankles and now they need all new clothes. There have been times in my spiritual life that, that my growth has uh, just really taken off other times that it's been a bit stunted and uh, the growth was slow in developing. That'd be true of all of our lives. But Lord, we need to be hearers and doers of the Word. We need to pay attention, and we need to meditate upon the Word of God, and then we need to obey and apply the Word of God so that we can grow and become more like You. But Lord, I pray You'd use the message tonight just to encourage us that uh, when we're reading our Bible, to pay attention when we're under the preaching of the Word of God or the teaching of the Word of God, to not let our mind get distracted or to uh, be thinking about other things, but to pay close attention. Uh, Lord, uh, I pray that uh, uh, you speak to hearts tonight and that we would make a decision that we're going to be hearers and doers so that we can grow and become more and more like you and please you in our life. Would you, speak, uh, God, uh, please... Uh, uh, deal with us in our hearts tonight. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's take a